We have so much to discuss in the wake of this shooting that took place at a historically black church in South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina last week. Uh, I, I we all expected to some degree that we would see very strange and offensive allegations come from the right about the impetus for catalyst for explanation behind and prevention methods involved around this shooting. But even I didn't expect it to get as insane as it has gotten. And I'll walk you through it. And, and it is it is grotesque, to be quite honest with you. Uh, first of all, we'll go to Charles Cotton, who's a member of the National Rifle Association's board. He believes someone other than the admitted shooter, Dylan Roof, is responsible for the shootings that took place in the church, leaving nine people dead. He believes that it was actually Reverend Clementa Pinckney, state senator and pastor at the Emanuel AME Church, one of the victims of the shooting, who is actually responsible. How does Cotton explain this? Well, Cotton explained on the Texas CHLF forum, which claims to be the focal point for Texas firearms information and discussions, and where Mr. Cotton is a site administrator, quote, Pinckney vetoed concealed carry. Eight of his church members who might be alive if he had expressly allowed members to carry handguns in church are dead. Innocent people died because of his position on a political issue. The bodies are not even cold yet. And an NRA board member is saying one of the victims is personally responsible for his own death and the death of his fellow parishioners because he thought, Lewis, it might be a bad idea to have people carrying guns in churches. That's who is to blame here, not the perpetrator. Pretty bad, but I guess this is exactly what you'd expect, expect someone on the board of the NRA to say because they need to sell guns. They want more guns in more places. I don't know if he really believes this. If he does, he's a pretty stupid guy because once again, we have the assumption that the good guy with the gun always wins. And what if the shooter saw this one person that had a gun, took them out first and decided to keep shooting? Uh, you know, it doesn't always work out like in the movies, does it? And some background on Charles Cotton, by the way, earlier this year, he argued on that same uh, website that teachers should be allowed to spank students so that he would not have to put a bullet in them. He has also accused President Barack Obama and quote multi-billionaires Michael Bloomberg and George Soros, among others, of being part of a plot to undermine the Second Amendment. Uh, and as Lewis is mentioning, would more guns have really averted this tragedy? Likely not, according to a new study which found that between 2007 and 2011, intended victims of violent crimes engaged in self-protective behavior with a firearm in only 0.8 percent of attempted and completed incidents. And thus the study concluded, quote, from a purely statistical standpoint, the likelihood that someone in that church could have blown away alleged shooter Dylan Roof before he finished his attack is fairly low. In theory, those chances go way up if every single church meeting in every single church had at least one member carrying a gun. But of course, that is only theoretical, Lewis, as you absolutely alluded to.